there will always be a better programmer than you. And although that may be hurtful for you here and to take in, the good side is that there is room for you to improve. And so what I like to do in this video is just share four lessons that I've learned to become a better developer and hopefully for you to improve as a developer. And look, the topic getting ahead of 99% of developers, I'm just saying that for the fun of it. There's just a lot of people that do a video on the subject. A lot of them are clickbaity, but I think there's value in this sort of topic because there are things you can do to improve, especially if you're new. With that being said, let's get into the four things that I do to get ahead of 99% of developers. So the first tip to get ahead of 99% of developers or be a better developer is to just stick to a technology. You see, a lot of the times as developers, we are told to go for the new thing, the new UI library, the new tech stack, Mern stack, Next.js, Svelte. We are so bombarded with a bunch of technologies and although it's a good thing to go for newer technologies, it's good to adapt. There is a point where you just need to stick with one and get really good at it. And I like this term, but you don't want to be a hopper, aka a rabbit developer, where you're just going from technology to technology, being average at all, but not mastering anything. What I've noticed with a lot of senior devs and you know good developers is that they get really, really good at one language. For example, they get maybe good at React frameworks. So sure, they may know like Angular, um, Vue, Next.js, but they're in a sphere where they're just really good at that one thing. And if you wanna know what I'm doing right now is that I'm just sticking with React and Next.js and then in the backend and databases, I'm basically just using really similar technologies like Prisma and uh, Drizzle. And look, I know what you may be saying right now, like you're just probably screaming through, through the screen right now, right? You're probably saying like, but there's, there's something better. Sure, Svelte in a way is better than Next.js and React. I actually really like Svelte, but I'm really good at Next.js and React and I'm only gonna get better the more I do it. And I just don't see the point right now at least for me to make the switch to a whole different ecosystem and language so that I could start from zero. I'd much rather just get much better at Next.js and React. And in the future, maybe when it's time, I will make the switch. And by the way, I'm not saying never to switch, okay? I'm, I, that's all I'm saying. Switch, have fun. I always, I, I like to switch. It's something I enjoy to do from here and there, but just don't do it all the time. Stick to one, master it so that you can get better at that one thing. And that's basically what I've noticed with the best developers. They're just really good at specific things. Now, the next sort of thing you can do to get ahead of 99% of developers, I'm gonna stop with the jokes, but get ahead of developers. Um, is to just read the docs. I know this one is obvious, but it's not. When I was starting out as a new developer, fresh new developer, fresh off the boat, you could say, whenever I was lost or I was running into errors or bugs, I would just go on YouTube and just look up how to do X, how to do Y on Next.js or Shatzian. But, but we have the documentation there at our disposal. So let's say we are dealing with a Next.js problem so we need to go to their documentation we could just go to their docs here i have the this is actually a good example because i was trying to implement seo into my next.js application which the video will either be out or it's coming soon and i just went to the documentation and just saw how you do it and look the main benefits here is that it's just a lot faster because you're getting it straight from the source i would just much rather read a book made by elon musk like if i wanted to just learn from elon musk right and he wrote a book why would i read the review on that book or a person writing about Elon Musk when I could just read the book on Elon Musk. I hope that's making sense. By reading the source, it's just a whole lot faster. I know it's difficult because it's a lot of work and some documentation is more difficult than others. Like I just hate Next.js documentation, but if I was able to do this, you can too. I know this is difficult and sucks and it's not fun because it's more work than just looking at a YouTube tutorial, but you will literally, you will save 10, 20 times more time. I'm not even kidding. 10, 20 times if you just read the documentation. In addition, it's, it's, it's much more clear. So here we have actual examples of how to implement uh, a sitemap XML in our example for Next.js, basically just SEO. And here we just have the clear data and you have more examples down here that you can just copy. And I would much rather just get it straight from the source where it's for the most part accurate and then we can adjust it on our own rather than from some YouTuber like me who, although it could be correct, you're not getting the real deeper dive on that subject. But yeah, just read the documentation, okay? Even if it's a little bit 
just read it, okay? Now, the third thing I've learned to get ahead of a lot of developers is have a student mindset. And here's what I mean by this, and I'm actually gonna draw for this. The basic developer, what they will do, and honestly, in all aspects of life, including myself, I'm actually quite subject to this, is that when we learn something, so maybe let's say we learned uh, HTML, so we're gonna have HTML. And then, you know, we, we finished that, and then we finally were able to learn JavaScript, and then, you know, we learned React, and then, bravo we got a job okay so so this just means we're, 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 we got a job and what a lot of developers will think right is that this by finishing react or whatever may be the subject is that this is the end of their learning but what i've learned especially really recently is that if you think that learning has an end point then you will never get to the point where you want to go because the best developers are always learning one of my favorite youtubers is web dev cody and I, I, he's a really good person and i you know I, I highly recommend his channel he is always learning new things he's always trying to improve on his last piece of code and he's look, just looking for ways to get better and that's because he doesn't end his learning ever instead what he does is maybe once he's done learning react or when he was done learning react he maybe moved on to Next.js, and then maybe once he was really good at Next.js, he went into the specifics of maybe Svelte or data structures and algorithms, and then he learned something else, and then he's learning something else, and then he's learning something else until the eternity of time. And what I've really struggled with myself is to not think of learning as this temporary thing, but rather an important part of being a developer or learning any skill. If you look at any sort of person, that's successful and i just realized that we deleted uh the text so let's just get that back i'm just gonna call it student is that they look at learning like a muscle by constantly doing it you get better at it and the more that you learn basically the more that you will know and so our goal as developers shouldn't be to one day like say oh i'm done learning from now because that's the wrong way of doing it and i just think a lot of us do think like that but rather think in terms of what's next to learn we don't want to just end at a certain point because then we stay stagnant we, we cannot improve from that point point. and i just can't imagine a world where like i just stopped at javascript right what type of developer would I be if I just knew HTML, CSS, and JavaScript and nothing else? No data structures and algorithms, no UI libraries, none of that. It's just, it's very stagnant, very boring, and it'll hold you back significantly if you stay like that. And the final aspect of being a much better developer is to just have fun. And look, I know we talked a lot of shit in the student mindset and, you know, things I've done in the past. But one thing I've noticed with developers, including myself and, you know, a lot of people around me, is that we prioritize functionality over having fun. And in my opinion, this is just completely wrong. I think we should be able to have fun, although things get tough. And I'll, even if it is not optimal, because think of it like this, you can optimize as many things as you want, your routine, your language that you use, the computer that you use. If you do not have fun and it forces you to quit, like if it's just so boring and annoying that you just hate programming and that you just don't wanna be there anymore, then you're not gonna be a better developer than the person that's having fun who's doing it all the time, even if they have worse technologies. And if we want to just be the best coders we can be, we have to realize that we have to have fun in order to do that. And so just pick languages that you enjoy, frameworks that you're gonna use, oops, frameworks like this, do stuff that will make you love programming. Is Next Auth the best authentication system in the world? Of course not. Their documentation sucks and sometimes it's really annoying to use. But I love using Next Auth. I like it. It's something that I just have had in a really good time using and it's fun developing with them. I don't care if Lucia is better or Clerk has a new system in there. I don't care. I like using Next Auth. I enjoy it. Also, I like using Prisma. Is it slower than some other thing? Sure. Is it an ORM, not a database? Yes. So what? I like using it. The differences between technologies nowadays is so small, okay? I know in some cases it's you need to make the switch and in the, those cases you have to make the sacrifices, but generally, the language that you pick, the frameworks, it does not matter because if you don't enjoy it, nothing will matter at the end of the day. And just make sure you're having fun because that's all we're trying to do, right? We want to have fun. We want to enjoy the process of development. And you can do that by having some choice and say in what you want to pick. Focus on yourself for a bit, you know, pick what you like so that you can just enjoy it. But yeah, these are the four things that I have done to improve as a developer and to get ahead of 99% of developers. Stick to a technology, stick to something and master it. Read the documentation, 
Go over it before you search for anything else. It'll save you so much time. Think like a student, always learn, always try to improve in some way, because if you don't, you're gonna get worse as a developer because as new technologies come out, you're not gonna adapt. And finally, have fun. Pick languages you like, pick technologies that you enjoy. Forget about what the optimized thing is, okay? Just those don't matter at the end of the day, okay? But yeah, and by the way, if you wanna join the developer Discord group, I will leave that down below. This is the, in my opinion, the best uh, server in the world. I freaking love it. And uh, it's just a place for developers. You know, we have everything from feedback to front end and back end servers, just a place to talk. So if, if, you, if you're a new developer, if you wanna just develop and have a group of people who are like you, then I will leave the Discord down below. Happy coding, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.